Hey, Jonathan here. I've got a question from James who uh, he sent me sort of a long message. I'm just going to summarize it. Uh, basically, he had a sales call, sales interview with a prospect, and they determined together that the project uh, outcome was worth approximately 80,000 pounds in opportunity for the customer. So uh, James suggested three tiers of pricing, which is what I recommend everyone does in their project proposals. Uh, option one was uh, 4,000 pounds, so 5% of the 80K. And option two was 8,000 pounds, which was 10% of the 80K. And then option three was 12,000 pounds, uh, which was 15% of the 80K. And then he says, the client couldn't shake my hand quick enough for option three, which as you say, could uh, should always be the blue sky offer. Or maybe because he openly admitted to being wealthy, 12K just wasn't that much of a big deal to him. Uh, so then, then James asks, maybe I should have suge suggested option one, 10% of year one, option two, 10% of year five, and option three, 10% of year 10. So my uh, Jonathan question is, when value pricing, do you measure the value to a specific date? If not, is there a good guide to measure value? Okay, so th the thing that James is wrestling with here is how to graduate the pricing, how to, what, what curve to use to increase the pricing across the three options. And uh, here's, here's what I do. First of all, the specific answer to his question is, I'm only thinking about the value that will be derived from the client or what it's worth to the client for the first year. After that, things, who knows what's going to happen after that. Uh, I'll just say, you know, um, to myself or when I'm talking to them in the, the why conversation, I'm thinking about the first year. So, you know, so client, what would this do for your, what if we had a home run? What does year one look like after we launch this? What's the first year after this is, goes live or that I finish this or deliver this or, or we finish this project? What does the first year after that look like? What would a home run look like? What would be your dream numbers at the end of the year? However you want to ask that question that I'm not thinking 10 years out or five years out. So the, the next obvious question is, well, how do you pick the three prices? And the way I would do that is uh, I would say uh, you can use, I use two different pricing curves. Or I recommend two different pricing curves, basically. Uh, one, my preferred pricing is uh, what I call Goldilocks pricing. And the uh, and another one, which is useful in a specific situations where you really, really want to get the job and you want to leave the least amount of money on the table is called might as well pricing. So I'll talk about those real quick. Uh, so let's say I'm going to use $100,000 uh, in value. So you talk to the client uh, and they say, I'd be 100000 You know, you get the feeling. They Maybe they tell you or you just get the feeling that it's worth about hundred grand to them in the first year alone. Okay, so I'm going to start option one is going to be 10% of what I'm pretty sure it's worth to the client. So that's a very small percentage considering. Uh, and then I'll set option two at 2.2% of uh, the overall. Sorry, I keep, I keep saying this wrong. Um, option one is going to be, say, $10,000. Option two is going to be 2.2 times that. So almost a little bit more than double option one. So in this case, it'd be $20,000, $22,000. And then option three would be 5x option one, so it would be 50,000. So the percentages would be 10% of the value, 22% of the value, and 50% of the value. And what this does is it makes option three significantly higher than, than two or one, which is going to drive them to the, the middle option, the Goldilocks price, the middle one. This one's just right. And, uh, but really, any one that they pick is going to be fine for you because once you set your prices, then you reverse engineer what you're going to do for each price. So if I had $10,000 to help this client move this needle, what would I do? Well, I could do these things and it's not going to get them all the way there, but it'll definitely move the needle and I'd be happy to do it for 10 grand. So that becomes your option one. And then you do the same thing with the other two prices. What, what can I do for $22,000 to really help this client achieve this objective or this business outcome? And then you come up with some scope to do that. And the same thing at 50,000. So, um, so with the, the uh, Goldilocks pricing curve, I based the price for option one at 10% of what I think the, the project is worth. And then I multiply for the t other two options by 2.2 and then by five, sometimes even 10, depending. Um, but usually five for option three. Uh, and then quickly, I mentioned um, uh, might as well pricing. So I'll just talk about that real fast. If you really want to land the project, you're really nervous about um, giving them sticker shock or overpricing it or something like that. 
you can use might as well pricing where option one would still be 10% of the value. Option two is 1.5. So, um, you know, uh, 50% again, higher than option one. So if, if option one is 10,000, option two would be 15,000. And then option three would be 17,5, 17,500. So they're only going up a little bit. And in fact, the curve is, is um, sort of maxing out. And what the effect that that has is that the client will be like, well, if we're going to spend 10,000, we might as well spend 15. And then, geez, if we're going to spend 15, we might as well spend 17,5. So it drives them to option three. And, uh, you know, if you're new at having value conversation and you're really not sure about the value and you really want to land the project, might as well pricing is the safer one uh, where um, the uh, Goldilocks pricing is a little bit more swinging for the fences and, um, you know, more likely that they're going to pick option two. Uh, last thing on this I'm going to say is that if they picked option three immediately, then you uh, you can raise your prices. Obviously not in this case, but in the future. So if you came across a similar client in a similar situation, you could probably charge more because with with that kind of a curve, well, your curve wasn't that steep. Yeah. So if you it it'd be it's too bad we can't A B this. It would be nice to know what would have happened if uh, your option three was twenty thousand pounds, which would be five X of your option one. I wonder if we still would have jumped at it. Anyway, um, if people are, if you are using, uh, this, uh, Goldilocks pricing curve and people are consistently picking option three, your prices are too low. They should be, um, they should m more often be picking option two and option three is the kind of, they should only be picking once in a while. If they're picking it all the time, you can definitely raise your prices. Okay. That's enough for now. I'm Jonathan Stark. If you have a question for me, you can hashtag AskJonathan on LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, and we'll add it to the queue and I'll answer as soon as I can.